Now, in our uh, common vocabulary, we think Asura is a demon. And uh, given the prevalence of biblical vocabulary becoming part of English, that the idea of being evil right. or devil, satanic. Uh, but we don't have concepts like devil, evil, kind of satanic in our tradition. So, what, how would you differentiate Asura and demon and what, who is Asura, what is Asura? Yeah, so we have to understand the word Asura first of all, that it can be seen in two ways. One is that Asura means who is against Sura, mm. means who is against the Devas. And Devas are the people who are appointed to look after the management of this cosmos. So they try to disturb them for their own sake. So those are called Asuras, that is one way of seeing or Asun Ramta Eti Asura. Those who take pleasure in enjoying life, that is called Asura. So, in this sense, Krishna uh, describes in Bhagavad Gita that there are two types of people, two types of prakriti, that Asuric and Daivik. And he has given a description there that what is the quality of a person who is an Asura and what is the quality of a divine person. Okay? So, so Dambho Darpo Abhimanascha. As somebody who is very arrogant and very proud and you know who hurts others, who exploits others, such a person is called an asura. That is one way of understanding, that it is the nature. Other way of seeing is that asura is also a clan. A clan? Right. A lineage? A lineage. That a dynasty? Dynasty. So, Kashyapa has 13 wives and one of them is Diti. Another was Aditi. So, sons of Aditi are called Adityas, they are the Devas. And son of Diti are called Datyas. So, they are the Asuric type of people. So, they are cousins. They are cousins. So, they are actually coming from the same. Yeah, same father. Yeah, they are basically coming from a Brahman father and Brahman mother. But because of their characteristic, because of their behavior, they are called Asuras because they are all the time fighting with their, in just like a rivalry between cousins. So, the, the, so one is the, quali the, the, the idea of Asura based on their qualities. Right. Uh, another is that they happen to be a historical dynasty. Right. So, uh, the historical dynasty got that name. Does it mean that all of them had that quality or they just had that name? Well, some of them had that quality, but not all of them. So, for example, Hiranyakashipu is a famous Asura. Right. But then we have his son who is Prahlad. So, Prahlad is also Asura. But he without those qualities. But he does not have those qualities. In fact, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Dattyanam Prahladosmi. That when he is explaining his Vibhuti Yoga, so he says, Among the Dattyas, I am Prahlad. So, he is, he is a Dattya. So, when a, a devotee. when a family name also has a meaning, then everybody gets that name, but does, does not mean that the meaning applies to them. Yeah, exactly. So, same, you know, Prahlad has. Then he has his grandson whose name is Bali. So, Bali was also a great devotee. So, like three Vedi really means knowing three Vedas. Right. Or right. Chatur, Chatur Vedi, Vedi means four Vedas. Right. But in the lineage sense, you know, your sons, grandsons and everybody is called like that, doesn't mean that they really know all that. Yes. So, it just becomes a, a use of brand name, but the the <laughs> brand name does not does not properly describe the entity. Yeah, just like these days, you know, I mean, name Gandhi has become very popular. Yeah. Gandhi is a family name. Yeah. But then there are other Gandhis. Yeah, yeah. Who have nothing you to go do to with a, that. You go to an electronic store in the US called Best Buy, but it may or may not give you the Best Buy. Right. That is, the, the literal brand does not have to reflect what it actually is. Yes. It's just the way it is called. So, the Asura as a dynasty, is a different use of the term right. from the way we use it to mean a certain kind of person, a certain quality. Yes. A certain so, when it is used in the sense of characteristics, yes. then it basically describes a person who is very materialistic by nature, who is very much identifying with the physical body and who wants to enjoy materially. That is called an asura. So, there is an interesting story in the Upanishad that that Virochana, who was the king of the Asuras and uh, Indra, 
they both heard that anyone who knows what is an atma becomes very happy and you know peaceful and liberated so, and the, this knowledge is available with brahma so they both went to brahma the story and they stayed there for a long time before they got their first lesson 32 years so after 32 years they got their first lesson but brahma did not give them the whole package in the first lecture so he said okay come i will teach you he took them to a lake and he says what do you see in the lake so indra says well i see my body he says that is atma he called viroch and what do you see in the lake he says i see my body he says that is atma so they said wow this is very wonderful so viroch and he left and he never came back indra also left but then he started thinking well if this body is atma how did this body dies body becomes sick and this cannot be atma so he came back and he studied but virochana who is the asura he went away and he declared he says look guys this body itself is the atma and just enjoy so the story is actually to say that those who are identifying with the body as their own self that is what is the basis of asura and then obviously if you identify with this body then all the bad qualities come out of that so i want to digress a little bit and uh, ask uh, if we have devas and asuras and devas are aligned with bhagwan mm mm-hmm. the supreme person and asuras are more materialistic they're not identifying right now if we look at the idea of yagna right yagna is sort of alignment giving back towards this cosmic process is there a anti yagna equivalent is there some term that means those who disrupt the yagna yeah the, the, these are the asuras asuras That's, yeah so asura would you're doing a yagna and he the whole idea is to and he come and disrupt it yeah he will do something to disrupt it or or propagate knowledge against it so people in society who are trying to build a better society have a collective evolution of human of us uh, towards more dharma uh, are doing a devic function right and that is a yagna yes and those who are interfering that blocking is they are they are doing the they're stopping the yagna and that is asuric that is completely asuric so like the word yagna is there like the word yagna corresponds with the devic process is there a word that corresponds with the asuric process some anti yagna that is called yolo <laughs> <laughs> okay you heard of yolo no, no tell me no, you don't hear what is yolo yolo is you only live once you only live once <laughs> so there's a oh. big there's a big movement going on at present and this is considered like just like a religion you only yeah. live once yeah they call it yolo so you that can... lifestyle is the anti yagna that is the anti yagna anti yagna <laughs> this is we should remember this you only live twice you only live once yes so that gives you this hedonistic lifestyle right uh, and then you identify with the body because the body lives once right and you don't identify with the atman because it it's not limited because then then there's no question of yagya and all these things are just yeah you know superstitions right mm. right so so that's a that's a good good way to uh, differentiate these two so right. yagya and yolo <laughs> yagya the opposite is yolo, yolo. but is there a sanskrit word because there must have been people who disrupted we know rakshas disrupting yeah so this rakshasas asuras daityas these are against that principle so can we say rakshasas are, are asuric are asuric people yes i mean in a way if you see these asuras were also doing yagyas right but they were doing it for for, a, for their own for selfish their, for yolo purpose yeah that <laughs> we enjoying yeah so that is misuse of that knowledge right right so the purpose is that you actually give back so that this whole system is maintained as right. krishna says evam pravartitam chakram nanu vartati ha aghayur indriya ram mogham partha sa jivati so he says that i have set up this chakra this cycle so if you see in the nature there is a cycle you know we breathe oxygen and then there we create carbon dioxide but the trees and plants they are taking carbon dioxide and making oxygen so there is a chakra but now if i cut the trees and i don't plant then i am disrupting the right so that is asura hmm. this is asura so therefore krishna says 
<coughs> Aghayu Indriya Rama. He uses the word Indriya Rama. Indriya means senses, Arama means enjoying. That who is only interested in sense pleasure, that person he says is living in vain, he is Aghayu. His, mm. his life is sinful, which mm. means miserable mm. basically. Sinful means miserable life. That he is actually living a miserable life, he is causing misery to himself or herself and to others. Mm. So that's that's why Krishna comes to eliminate them. Mm. That is the meaning of dharma sanstatma. Mm.